Hello, I'm Susan Hogan from the Staten Island Museum and welcome to Super Science. Take a look at all the birds when you're in your backyard or walking in the park. Chances are you will see several types of birds, each with different body shapes, colorations, and beaks. Today, we are gonna focus on the beaks. Birds have evolved over time to have specialized beaks for their diets. They've developed adaptations in their beaks. These adaptations help birds be better equipped to eat certain types of food and live in certain types of habitats. Organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. Bird beaks come in all shapes and sizes, depending on the food they eat. To demonstrate this, we will do an activity to see which beak is better suited for different types of food. We'll use items you can find at home to represent different beak shapes and a variety of bird food. For this activity, you will need to gather some materials. For the beaks, I'm using a bag clip. This can represent the beak of a blue jay or robin that use their beaks to crack open nuts and seeds or to pick up worms and insects. I also have a straw that can represent a hummingbird that drinks nectar from a flower. And then I have a spoon. This one has holes in it to act like a duck's bill filtering food from the water. For the different types of food, I have lentils or beans to represent seeds and nuts. I have water to represent the nectar from flowers, macaroni pieces for the worms and insects, and marshmallows that represent the plant life that is floating in the pond or ocean. It's time for our bird beaks to come to the buffet table. Let's see which food is best suited for this type of beak. I'm gonna first try with the seeds and the lentils to see how we can pick up this bird food. I'm gonna try with the macaroni. Okay, now I'm gonna try the clip in the nectar. I don't seem to be picking up a lot here. There's nothing really to grasp onto. And now let's try the marshmallows. It seemed to do okay with the seeds and the insects, and maybe even get some food out of the water. This type of beak didn't seem at all well suited for the nectar. I'm gonna move on and try the straw now. The straw is like a thin needle, like the beak of a hummingbird, able to fit inside of the small opening of a flower to drink the nectar. It's not working very well on the seeds at all. Or on the macaroni that's like uh, insects or worms. Let's try it here. Oh, I'm getting some there. It's fitting inside and getting the nectar. It's not working very well to filter food out of the water. I think I can conclude that the straw, the needle-like straw that represents the hummingbird would fit right inside of a flower to get out the nectar. I think you can see there's some nectar in there. And finally, I'm gonna try the slotted spoon-shaped beak. I'm gonna try it first on the seeds and nuts. So it seems like they're very small. They're going right through the filtering process. Let's try it on the insects and worms. Seems to be working well. And now let's try it on the nectar. It's getting drops here. Everything is filtering right through. From my observations, I think the spoon or bill-shaped beak was best able to filter the plants from pond water. The clip easily picked up seeds and nuts and also worms and insects. And the straw was best able to drink the nectar from the flowers. When you try this activity at home, you can write down your results in your science journal or notebook and compare which beak is best suited for each type of food. These are my results. What did you observe? The form and function of a bird's beak are physical characteristics that get passed along through the generations. These adapted traits help the bird to survive and thrive. 
alive. The next time you are on a bird watching adventure, look closely at their beaks and imagine what food will be on their menu. I hope you had fun learning about bird beak adaptations. Thank you for watching Super Science with the Staten Island Museum.